Okay, it is 6.04 p.m. on November the 28th. I'd like to call the meeting of the Woodbury Select Board to order. Any adjustments to the Select Board agenda? I don't have any. Michael, none? Still no. Okay. We are now open for public comment. <laughs> Winner has become. Yes. <laughs> You're all on the agenda. So. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have bills and payroll orders that are partially approved, and the rest will be finished after the meeting is complete, along with minutes from the previous meeting. And the meeting, and the before, meeting that. before that. The October 24th meeting and the November 14th meeting will be approved uh, afterwards. Uh, Mrs. Durkee, can we do the town clerk's report, please? Yes. We have gotten the agreement with Brookfield Services for the <coughs> generator that needs to be signed off by the select board. And you have a choice of a one year or a two year by the looks. What's the difference? Price. Price. <laughs> Is it more than twice as much? Well, actually, um, no, it's, it's. Oh, you've seen it? It's. Um, yeah, this is the, the two so, year is more economical. Actually, it's two visits a year, um, not two years. Um, so, oh. so they would come, um, and it's kind of described in the right. co cover letter. But um, they could come once a year um, or twice a year, and the difference is about a hundred and sixty dollars <coughs> from four hundred nineteen dollars for one. Visit, to visit to an annual major service visit, and then two visits is six hundred and eighty-three dollars. Yeah. So. And I think the last time we went with two years, just because of what happened one time when the it was we in the winter a, and the we had a sensor <coughs> a sensor die, and then yeah. we had to have an emergency service call. Yeah, and the thing and the generator didn't work. Just didn't work at all. So that so that was two visits a year. Mm -hmm. For six so we, so we didn't have to pay an emergency visit because we already we had did. Two. We did because we didn't oh. have the two. Yeah. Oh contract. well. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think about that, Larry? All for years we always carried the two year. Um, twice a year. Two yeah. Twice a year visit. Okay. Yeah. It really makes a difference. One year they really do a complete go through, change oil, do everything mm -hmm. that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. The next time they just tune things up and mm -hmm. make sure that everything is working. And they usually time it so that they come right around Christmas time, so mm -hmm. it's kind of covered for the winter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So well, yeah, I guess I'll that. move that we approve that for the twice a year for. Okay. For so there's a motion to approve from Diana. Do I hear a second? I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So we're making a two-year commitment to Brookfield Service for work on. Our general generator, our Generac. And the total for that was what? $683. $683. Actually, $649 if we go ahead and move on this and do something about it before the 5th of December, which oh, well, we have a window. Yeah. You could make that work. So Let's it's see. even more economical <laughs> if we act on it quickly. Tom will be in on Monday if. Tom is not available this coming Monday. Oh. So Brandy might or might not. So we might or might not be able to make well, that. Well, we'll see. Yeah, so it's worth a shot. Yeah. Maybe we could let them know that we approved it, but we just don't have the a way our to treasure is not available. Way to actually yeah, give they them might money. be sympathetic. Oh, we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure she'd be able to walk one of us through it over the telephone mm. to get it paid. Okay. Oh. I can drop a check off. I have to literally drive by the place on my way to work. Oh, mm -hmm. you do. That's right. Literally, yeah. Yeah, I know where it is. Too. <laughs> <laughs> so we can make this work yeah. if we were able to to cut a check. Okay. See, all right. <clears throat> Can't hurt us. No, nope. uh, Mrs. Jerky, please continue. And we also got an email from Lucian Avery mm -hmm. concerned about Nichols Pond. Okay. There is a new fence up there. Right. Yeah, um, I am happy to give him a call about that. I, I know 
some of the particulars of that and um, have sort of been anticipating that somebody might be wondering about that. It's a, like a gate? It's a gate. And it's a great big, like a farmyard <coughs> gate. It's, well, uh, if you want me to the explain gate. the situation there, I'm happy to do that if you want to take that. I got enough for each one of you if you want. Okay. I think you should. Okay. 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 If you have a sense so, of that. Um, Thank you. Need one more? We'll take one more. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. So the folks who own Cahagan, which is mm -hmm. basically the Meyer family, um, mm -hmm. they are contending, and other camp mm -hmm. owners agree with them, um, that, that the road that's been used historically down to the dam is a private road. Um, and there is an old mm. town road that also goes down to the dam. It comes out below the dam that they have spent the summer fixing up, um, which will become, um, according to the Meyer family, uh, the new uh, access to the dam. They've been um, communicating with Fish and Wildlife about that. So who is they? Is that Meyer's family? The Meyer our family, okay. yeah. So there are two roads that go down to there, the dam from... There are two roads now. There used to be an old road. road. The original road down to the dam, and in fact, it probably was originally a road before there was even a dam there, because mm -hmm. uh, there used to be a village down below um, Nichols Pond oh. um, that used water power. Mm -hmm. So this was a very, very old road. Um, we looked at it... Um, back when Gary Ewan was the road foreman, um, with the thought of having that become the access to the dam, and, and it was just, you know, Gary said it would cost too much money, you know, they, um, so it never happened. But um, the Meyer family, uh, John Meyer is the one that has always um, stated that the road that has been used for many, many years, it goes down to the dam is a private road. Um, I've asked him for proof of that, um, which I've never received, um, but, mm -hmm. um, and I haven't even tried to look in the town records to yep. see. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, I don't know when the road was built. It's been a road mm -hmm. ever since I was a kid going up there, and that's starting in the mm -hmm. early 50s. Um, 1950s. So, mm -hmm. um, so anyway, and, and last winter was the first year that Nichols Pond was open for ice fishing. So people would um, drive down the road uh, they, and park, or either park up at the top of the hill where this gate is, and then they were crossing uh, camp owners' property to get onto the pond. And some of the camp owners were upset about that, rather mm -hmm. than using the dam, which is which is the fishing access. Um, so that's kind of what started this. Hmm. So, well, so the, I'm sorry, the, it was open for ice fishing? Mm -hmm. why, why wouldn't it have been open for ice Nipples fishing? Nipples Pond forever? and East Long Pond have been um, closed for ice fishing for years. Really? Yeah. Huh. And last year was the first year that it was open. Huh. Fish and Wildlife opened it up for ice fishing. So it did create a bunch of problems. There's also the perennial summer um, uh, partying on the dam. Um, no, no. So um, it's mostly Hardwick area people that are there, but, um, and there's no enforcement, in, you know. So, um, you know, I'm kind of assuming that somebody will challenge this. Uh, mm -hmm. It does look like um, Lucian is at least aware of it. It is listed on the town road maps as a class four road, mm -hmm. um, which according to the Meyer family is not true. Um, and I question it myself mm -hmm. because there's a part of a road that's more of a driveway to a couple of camps that's also listed as a class four road. And I, I know that's not true. So, and those state maps that we get, um, I think they're based on information that the towns give them rather than what's actually True or not. And again, finding out in the town records if it is a class four road um, would probably be a piece of work. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. to say it. Um, so, so that's what this is about. It's basically to try to 
um, limit the use of the dam um, in the summertime to have people who want a winter access to the pond to use this new road and um, the summer access would also be using this new road that the Meyer family um, you know kind of upgraded this very old historical road um, hmm. and they have a they've been working the thing out with Fish and Wildlife so that it would become a primitive uh, boat access which means that people would have to carry to get onto the water um, which is primarily what happens now it's pretty mm -hmm. much a canoe kayak um, a small fishing boat pond I have a camp there also that's why I know all about this stuff um, so yeah so that's what's going on there um, so the uh, the gate that's been there forever have were they uh, closing that in the winter there was a gate further down the road at the bottom of the hill this is right at the top of the hill as you turn off the um, no. the, Nich the Nichols Pond mm -hmm. Road this is mm -hmm. the gate the road that's closed is the Nichols Dam Road mm -hmm. and then the Nichols Pond Road goes up to this um, so there was a gate halfway down the Nichols Dam Road um, mm, okay. that the camp owners put up. Um, and it was never locked, but it would give people the time, like a, there was a curfew time set at the dam. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, bring, car whatever trash you carry in, please carry out, no fires, et cetera. You know, so there was a sign on there. Mm. Um, and pretty much in the summertime, it was open all the time. Uh, sometimes a couple of the camp owners close to the dam would go up to let the people know on the dam that, okay, it's time to go home now. Um, no. And then uh, if, they, if they left, which often they didn't, um, they would go mm. close the gate. Um, and I assume that this gate would not be mm. locked. So this is... I guess you could say it might be a pent road at this point, although they haven't... It, we haven't determined that as a town. No, that's a, um, an official thing. Yeah. So. Um, they and they haven't asked to have it. Well, they can't ask they, if they don't admit. You know, if their position is their position that it's not is, a town road, then they can't ask to have it right. be a permanent road. Their position is the that's their road. road. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you know, there is a uh, clause. I'm, I'm not going to be able to remember, but it's something about use and maybe Alfie you know that term where a road that's been used publicly for so many years and and if a town has worked on it there's a kind of like a two-word term hmm. for that hmm. status of that road yeah I'm not sure of yeah the term, but I, I know that there is uh, there is laws that protect the town if they have mm -hmm. serviced it or done maintenance to the mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. within certain amount of time. I think it's right. like seven mm. or ten years. Okay. Yeah. Then they is, is that is that called I'm just gonna chime in real quick, is that called prescriptive rights or adverse possession? It's not called mm. I think you're close, mm. but it's that doesn't ring a bell in my memory. There's okay. it's like a it's two word right. yeah. term um, something and something something. <laughs> that's <great. laughs> so um, that's not much help. But mm -hmm. Paul Gillis, I, Paul Gillis um, did instruct me on this at one point in the distant past. Um, and I think actually Norm Etkin is aware. And Norm mm -hmm. has a camp up here too. Um, so, and I would mention that he's called me about this and is a little bit concerned. But. Well, it sounds like something we're going to hear a bit more about. Right. Robin, did remember that guy? It was only like a month ago. There was a guy in the vault who offered to send a bunch of links to, to information that he got from the state VTrans website about some old roads. Did you ever get that? Did not get that. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I don't even remember who it was. You know, and technically, like, this. Oh, sorry. Sorry. I'm trying to remember who said that. It was a yeah. It was. I think it was those two guys that are surveying that. Oh, and then it was Philo. Okay. Yeah. I think so. Okay. So and the road that the Meyer family fixed up, um, you know, that probably was a town road sometime in the distant past. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it was never on any maps as a class four road. So technically, I think it would be considered a historical road, right. which you know Woodbury chose not to 
claim any of those a long know, time ago. A long time ago. So mm -hmm. it's basically a private. That is a private road also, and it goes back to the people whose property it crosses, and of course, all of the people that whose property this road crosses are all camp owners at Nichols, and so they all were pretty much on board on having this road fixed. So up. the second road is also over camp properties. Huh. Yeah, yeah. Well, oh, okay. yeah. Some of the people that own camps there own a mm -hmm. you know pretty good chunk of land okay. away from the pond. Away from the pond. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Whitcombs um, okay. and the Meyer family. Myers, yeah. yeah, most of the property was on the Meyer family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so shall we just wait and I, I will respond to Lucian. Um, what did he say? Did he say okay, what his so issue his, was? Well, um, just curious. I was up at Nichols point? Pond a couple days ago, yeah. and there was a new closed gate blocking the way. Oh, I attached an image. I'm concerned, I'm concerned about, about public, public access. access. Okay. I can't find any policies about road closures mm -hmm. on your website, but I did see that it is listed as a Class Four road mm -hmm. in the roadmap. Okay. The road sign also says it is a private road. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so it just so it's it's a. I mean, mm -hmm. for me, the issue is is that the Meyer family, for many many years, has claimed it's a private road. Um, I've never seen any proof of that in any town records, um, mm -hmm. and um, the town has it on its map as a Class, Class four, four road. But chances are, if we were to look on our records to see if it actually was a Class 4 road, um, I doubt there would be anything there. Any record of mm -hmm. its maybe, designation. Um, but maybe. And also, look. you know, it's been a road that's been used by the public. Um, for decades. Mm -hmm. For decades, yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's say, in my knowledge, from 1950 on, mm -hmm. which was 70 plus years ago now. Um, so With maybe. relation to this road, this existing Nichols Camp Road. Where mm -hmm. is this new road to the... Uh, it's probably about... Hardwick or? Um, no, it's in no, Newberry. It's, it's in the no, I mean, is it in the direction of Hardwick? Yes, the by, about 25 yards away from where okay. that gate is. Yep. Okay. And I believe there's, gonna, there's a gate there, too. Mm -hmm. It's a snowmobile. It's a vast trail. It's a vast trail. At least down to the power line. Mm -hmm. and then, uh, yeah, it's part of the vast system. Yeah. And it's not the turnaround? No. No. Okay. Actually, the where is this that, gated is is sort of the turnaround. That's what I mean. The yeah. tur the gate. The, the, the town the highway gate. turnaround. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, a gate there too. That's way down at the beginning of the Nichols. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's, so this. It's, it's not adjacent to that. Alfie, are we plowing that road now? Uh, mm -hmm. My understanding is that uh, Hardwick. Is we'll continue. It okay. Because it's just a short distance. Yeah. And they have to be there anyways. Okay. And they have to turn around. Yeah, it's a Hardwick road for a short stretch. It is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So while I have intentions on me, can I mm -hmm. just ask a question? Sure. Uh, the ref where it references the the, the the map, the town map. Mm -hmm. Is that the state map? So is this registered? This road registered as a class four with the state? Yes. Mm -hmm. I think it so is. Then it's on the town. It's, it's on the. It's, it's on the state four. atlas viewer as a class four road. Yeah. So I would say that it's a class four. Mm -hmm. yeah, that would be the immediate assumption. I agree. Yeah. But apparently, their claim to it being a private road goes back quite a ways. Well, I don't so. know where their claim. You know, I, I've never sh been shown any kind of. Uh, legal or historical or town record or anything that that that, that prove you know that they base their opinion on. Mm. Okay. Yeah. My assumption is that the road was built to allow Hardwick Electric access to the to, dam. To the dam. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh -huh. Okay. Um, we'll have to do more with it, but let's. Okay. If you don't mind reaching out directly to Lucian, okay, that would be a good start. Mm. Um, Can't explain exactly the conversation. And maybe after that. I'll talk to you a little bit just to figure out who I can get a hold of from the state. I mean, just to try to find out. Sure. Mm. It is yeah. registered. Yeah. It shows up on the Atlas Viewer. Yeah. Then and it's on the map it, that we get from it, the trans. And it's, it's registered. Um, so there's a record of it being classified as a Class Four. Well, that's the thing. I don't know if, if there is a record. 
Well, if it's so on the map, where did it come from? It's on the state. It's on the state map. That's a pretty, pretty reasonable reference point. Yeah. To well, start I'm, not, I'm not really sure why this this driveway that I know about that's also <coughs> on that map is a class four road. I'm not sure why that is on there either. No, this, so it's, yeah, there are yeah, several. Yeah, could be such I driveways. suspect some confused information, but okay. Robin, could you try to remember who that guy was and and see if, if do you, do they still come in? So there's one or two different guys. Killian might have said something about it too, and he's in there tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So I will check with him. Yeah, I think he said that. Yeah, I think he said the information came from Vtrans records somewhere. Mm -hmm. That he had a bunch of mm -hmm. things he could just send the. It almost seems like it was Philo and Rob that were in there when we were talking Rob about was. that. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. And I, and I think there is some stuff, legal stuff, about actual public use, the fact that it's been used so publicly that... Um, that it's become right-of-way? Yeah. There's another legal term for that that mm -hmm. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Uh, Mrs. Jerky, please continue. And that's about all I have. Mm -hmm. Other than... Uh, Water system with the school, and I think that's why Larry and Ann are here, so <laughs> I'll mm -hmm. leave it to them. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay, mm -hmm. okay so um, Ms. Smith is not here, so we're not going to do the town treasurer's report, obviously. Um, and we'll have to wait on her discussion of preparations of the FY24 budget as well. Mm -hmm. We could talk a, a little bit about that um, I had I just had wanted to share that um, in the past for the town highway part of the budget um, that I would meet with usually meet with Greg or Greg and Greg and Chuck have sort of done it the last couple of years but we could ask the highway um, you know Alfie to put together a proposed budget for the highway part of it um, and then usually what would happen is that, is that they would come to one of the budget meetings and we would just go over it and, and um, you know, um, mm. discuss and approve what they've come up with for figures. I seem to recall Brandy sitting down with Greg and just going line by line. How much do you think you're going to need for yeah. tractor repairs this year compared to last year? And, you know, so when she gets back, maybe she can give us an updated... Uh, status of what's where okay. in the different accounts. And okay. Do we know if Brandy is going to be available to do this? As of right now, we don't know. Okay. So what happens if she isn't? Well, Tom told me this morning that he is more than willing to still do the part that he has done in the past. Mm -hmm. That's where the delinquent taxes and there's three or four other ones there. The general fund probably. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So he could probably print out, you know, that report that Brandy used to give us at every meeting. Right. There's a certain can you use that? Um, budget that she gives us that that has a, you know, a final column for putting in the proposed um, yeah. amounts. Well, that would be nice too, but yeah. Well, I'm sure that's yeah. somewhere on the computer that Tom could find for yeah. us. So, should we try to? Schedule some meetings, or do we want to wait till after our next December, our first December meeting? I mean, I think we should try to work on this whether Brandy's available or yeah. not. It seems mm -hmm. like we should be acting on it sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think we should try to schedule some meetings to at least get started on this. Okay. Um, because I can always call Penny at Nemeric, too, and she can... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. No, I mean, like, like last year, you and Brandy, and, and I, probably Diana was involved, too, um, <coughs> did kind of do the general budget, you know, for the, for the town. Um, yep. Came up with figures. Um, and then, um, you know, Alfie, Greg could kind of think about what they would be needing, you know, we having a budget to look at, um, if we could get that 
form that has a column for the fiscal year, for fiscal um, year 24. Um, then you you know you guys could kind of put in what you're thinking you would need. And, and the one she gives us is called a comparative budget report, and it has the FY22 budget, the actual um, paid to date. Oh, the actual budget for 2022, the actual 2022, the budget for FY23, and how much we've spent. Well, in this case, it would only be like July, so five months. Yeah. And, and then, then uh, we can, there's a blank space. <laughs> there is a blank space that yeah. we could fill in. What she gives us to work on the budget with it is this conf comparative budget report. Mm -hmm. And then there's a column to the far right where that space is mm -hmm. for fiscal year uh, 2024 mm -hmm. for us to mm -hmm. fill, fill in. And then, you know, usually what we do is kind of compare the past years. Mm -hmm. um, and so. So. Do you want to? Yeah, we can we can use what what we have. We have. And we usually we wait till mm -hmm. December um, because then we have like half a year of, mm -hmm. to go by. Um, and then there's always a last minute rush to get it ready for the town report. Right. Well, it, yeah, it's all a last minute rush. Yeah. <laughs> no. With you know usually a few special meetings to get it worked out. So we could technically work with this. Um, it's a good starting place. Yeah. Um, is it <coughs> too aggressive to try to just meet next Monday? Um, I can't meet next Monday. I have a, another meeting. Okay. We have our next select board meeting on the 12th. Yeah. Um, we could, depending on what else is on the agenda, I, I think in my experience with a select board in the past, it's, it was usually pretty hard to actually work on the budget during... Um, yeah. Yep. One of the scheduled monthly select board meetings. I agree. Have special meetings. Um, well. Well, there's us also Tuesday and Wednesday <coughs> next week. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I have something Thursday night mm -hmm. already. So yeah, Tuesday or Tuesday. Wednesday would work for me. It's Tuesday the sixth. Yeah. Let's do that. Okay. So we will have our first. Working budget working meeting. budget planning meeting at six p.m. Mm -hmm. Okay. And let's see. Robin has open hours, and we could um, we oh, could actually right. meet at the town office. That would Sounds be lovely. Nice. Yeah. And then we would have our town clerk right next door, and maybe even. The Tom. I don't know if he probably doesn't come in on the evening hours. No, he only comes in on Mondays. Yeah, okay. But we would have Robin there. And I can make it so we can block out any research next Tuesday night, too. Okay. Oh. Thank you. There so usually aren't too many people that come to the budget meeting. Although. <laughs> <laughs> so you're all welcome. You'll have to sit in the outside room. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good. Uh, Mrs. Sturkey, anything else? No. Okay. All right. Well, we're a little late, but Ms. Kotecki? Yes. Would you mind um, giving, giving your initial introduction sure. to, to this yes. for us? Sure. Thank you. Um, my name is Karen Kotecki, and I'm doing the uh, easement acquisition and permit acquisition for CB Fiber and its territory. Uh, as you know, they're uh, getting gearing up to deploy high-speed internet in the municipalities, um, including Woodbury. Um, they've concerning the locations that I've submitted to you already. Um, we went over Michael your your questions and and. Um, comments and, and various questions from the board. And so just let me start by saying that in each of the 250 plus municipalities in Vermont, each one does, you know, things are slightly different. So my initial um, outreach to you was to kind of just see what I needed to do in terms of getting permits for uh, any underground installation. And now here we are. And so thank you for, for allowing me to, to attend tonight. Um, when our engineering firm looks 
uh, they look online at the poll locations. We're getting licenses to attach to the poll owning entities. It could be, you know, Green, Green Mountain Power, Washington Electric, Hardwick Electric, um, and including uh, consolidated communications. Most of the power companies do have their polls online. We, have, we, we can go on a, uh, the GIS and we can see where the polls are located. Unfortunately, Consolidated does not not have that kind of hmm. system. <laughs> so, in some cases, we may have asked for underground where indeed the CCI polls are located, and if that's the case, we will certainly attach to their polls as long as they're sufficient. Um, and, and if they're not, they would have to, you know, replace them with taller poles so that we could attach. In the in the five locations that I sent you, um, we're going to withdraw North North um, North Road. North mm -hmm. Road, um, yes. Yeah. Okay. So that we're not going to worry about that right now. The the other roads they did ask me to keep uh, in front of you, and we will do a physical field assessment. Um, I was hoping to get it done last week, but there were so many people on vacation because of the holiday. Mm. So we will go out and look to see where we can attach to CCI, the CCI poles, assuming they're there, they're, you know, that, that there are poles there um, to attach to, and we can get licenses. For Rathburn Road, they've asked me to keep that as well in place, um, according to some of the folks that are local and that know that, that road. They, they believe that there probably aren't any poles there and that we're going to need to put some underground. Oh. Um, to get yeah to get to some of the, mm. the homes um, Scribner Road same thing they've asked me to keep Keen Farm Road um, we're going to revise we only have to go a certain uh, amount of uh, distance in our underground instead of 600 feet it's going to be more likely like 300 feet but I will get and we're going to stop um, be, before going further up I think it's called um, Punks. Punkhorn Punk. Road. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> um, and then... Um, so you would go, even though there's only one house out there and they probably don't have power, you would still... No, go? not necessarily. We would, okay. we would have to assess it. And they are looking at the okay. locations one by one as best they can. Okay. If there's a handful, they're going to propose underground mm -hmm. or aerial if they have poles. If, if there's only one, they'll, they'll need to reassess mm -hmm. that. Okay. Um, Dog Pond Road. Um, we are so we are going to be looking for uh, CCI poles along that road. It's suspected that there might be poles there. Mm -hmm. um, Scribner Road as well. We're going to do a field assessment. And I told you about Keen Farm North Road. We withdrew, and we're keeping Dog Pond and Rathburn. So um, my question to you for Rathburn is that to me on. The, for myself, my own looking at, at, at online, it looks to me like it's uh, it could be a private road, but is it indeed a, a municipal road that's maintained by, by the town? It's not maintained by the town, no, no. Okay. So is it a so, class four? No, it's, it's private not road. a town road. It's really? A, it's yeah. a private okay. road. From where, the whole, it, the whole distance yeah. from the, okay. It's got a sign, but it's a private road. It goes into Nelson Pond. Oh, right, okay. yeah. Yeah, so for that kind of thing, we would need easements from the landowners, not necessarily a permit, uh, you know, from, from you, mm -hmm. folks, if you don't maintain right. that road. Mm -hmm. So, typically what I've done for the other, I'm also working for the another CUD in the Northeast uh, Kingdom. What, what I've been doing is reaching out to the highway departments, to the road commissioners, and asking point blank, you know, do we need a permit? What do we need to do? And meeting with them in person and kind of going and driving the, the underground road locations and Alfie, I'm happy to do that with you or I can send one of the construction guys out with you just to make sure that you're in agreement with any of those underground locations where we, we're proposing to install. Sure, just give me a call and we'll set okay. something up. So my question is, do you want me to come back? <laughs> I didn't want to not. I didn't want to cancel tonight because I really wanted to get it in front of you and talk talk about the process right. and understand better what the town is is you know requires, and then we can come back and give you you know the, the more definite locations where we definitely need, need Alfie to, to and the select board to sign off. Well, do you are you sort of looking for kind of like a general permission from the select board to 
in order to get the permit process uh, started and, and in order to get the implementation well, started? So or? Just, yeah, for example, um, let's just talk Salisbury, Vermont. They don't require okay. anything. They just, they just, they don't require anything. Mm -hmm. But, you know, um, Callis, Woodbury, um, um, Barnet, those types of places. I, I call ahead and, and they'll say, yep, the select board has to approve the locations. And that's what I've understood Woodbury needs to do. You need to approve the, uh, once Alfie has a chance to review and, and approve, that the select board actually has to sign off on something to say, yes, CB Fiber, you can locate your your, your uh, conduits in town right away. I don't, do we have to do that? We don't have a, we don't have a form or anything. Yeah. We just, I've always said that if you're working the in the board. town right of way, you are in a town road, you need to get the town's permission. Yeah. That's, you know, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, um, does that include aerial too when we're attaching to license poles? No. no. Not so, as much. I didn't think so. Somebody else is right away. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So just the underground, correct? Yeah. So, so it sounds to me like Alfie, I'll get with you if that's okay, and we'll get we'll ride the locations, and then I come back and, and Alfie can give his input, and then then you would just you know well, verbally say to me like we're doing right now and say okay you've got the you've got the okay as, as or do we even need do we need to do that? Have, 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 have. I was just gonna say as far as I'm concerned, if Alfie okay's it, you don't need a select board approval. Okay. I mean, that's my personal take okay. on this situation. Yeah. Um, but and, I don't and know that's how many, many of the other municipalities that I'm working in. Mm -hmm. But again, I don't want to take anything for granted. And so I've been reaching out to each select board or, or highway department to find out what exactly is the process. And for the most part, there isn't a formal process. You're absolutely mm -hmm. right. But I, again, we just want to make sure we've got all our you know, eyes dotted and T's crossed. Well, what we do with uh, access permits is once the road commissioner has approved it, the select board still has to sign off on it. So would you prefer that we do it that way, Alfie, or? Uh, well, I think either way is good for me. Okay. I just, um, I'm just recalling a conversation that I had with Greg, the ex-road commissioner, mm -hmm. and he tells me that there is a right-of-way permit. Oh. Um, so I, I think we might want to just let's be careful. Yeah. yeah. If there is yeah. one in place, then we need to, yeah. you know, it would be up to the select board to yeah. make that decision. Make that decision. Mm -hmm. Maybe Rob, Robin can look around in the file cabinet to see if there's she yeah. can find well, something. Yeah. Not, I'm, one that was I'm, I'm yeah. happy to. Karen, I'm curious as to whether those four or five roads are the only ones that you think underground is going to be needed, or is that just a start? No, at, no, it. it um, Okay, so no, that should be all Woodbury because oh. we're going by town, oh, right? Oh, we're starting. Right. But now that said, we may have to come back if somebody applies for service where we don't have any yeah. any yeah. fiber yet, right? So okay. That would yeah require sure. a follow up. Um, but that, and in, in some respects, I maybe jump the gun here. But again, CB fibers that you know they're they're. Um, they want to start construction. Mm -hmm. They're starting in Callis, as far as I know right now, and they're going to work their way and, and into Woodbury is one of the mm -hmm. first towns as well. So that's why I'm here. I, mm -hmm. I just, you know, and, and we've asked the engineering firm to identify all of the underground locations mm -hmm. that we're proposing in Woodbury at this time. And again, there, there may be amendments, but this, that's all I know at this time. So when you're doing your field work, you and LP, uh, the Scribner Road one is also very confusing to me. Because once you get up to the last house, it's like nothing for a long way until you get over to Logtown. I can't believe there are not poles all the way around Cranberry Meadow Road. Yes, I saw your email. And again, we'll be, we'll yeah, be doing that. that. Okay. We'll have a, I'm going to have our construction engineering folks do that, okay. hopefully this week, so I can have a better feel and then I can mm -hmm. get, get with you, Alfie. Okay. So I just have a question for the other select board members. What if there is no town highway a right away permit? What if we can't find one? We so just it comes back to us. I've never, I've never seen. No, one. I never have either, yeah. and I don't think we no. have much of a road policy handbook <laughs> or anything like that. So I that'd be nice. I can create one for you because I've had <laughs> <laughs> Oh, good, more <laughs> paperwork. Or we can put it in the <laughs> minutes. You know? Yeah, it's, yeah. It's just a simple mm -hmm. form, you know, mm -hmm. a, a access permit, like you said, mm -hmm. and then um, 
you know, the select board members sign it and, and after it's been reviewed in the field and I would list the, the, mm -hmm. the streets, the roads and, and the footages mm -hmm. and would go from there and that way, and then it gets recorded and that way you have mm -hmm. a, um, a document. So you know where the underground locations mm -hmm. are as well. So maybe the access permit form covers that too. I don't know, I haven't looked at it for a long time, so. Yeah, I'll look at it online. Mm -hmm. If it's online, I, I doubt it. I doubt it. <laughs> okay. Uh, Alfie. So one question I had for Karen is uh, something that came up in the last select board meeting was uh, about Dig Safe. Are, oh. are oh. you registered Absolutely. with Dig Safe? Uh, if you put underground in the uh, in our roads, are you registered with Dig Safe? Absolutely, we are, and we would call Dig Safe. In fact, we've already called them on some of our sites, our, um, mm. our, our no. OLT sites, optical terminal sites. Well, I mean more so for if 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 there's a contract of digging our road up in the future, are your lines registered with Dig Safe to be to be uh, labeled or no. uh, found? Yes, they mm -hmm. they are, but I will get you confirmation with with an email with that, so you know. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So do we want to create a permanent so that um, there's a written she, record? She said she might have one. <laughs> oh, I do. I have, I have several samples. I'm happy to send yeah, them. I can send sure. them to you, Michael, if you'd like, and then sure. you can share. And, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll send them in like a Word document so you can... Um, Change the... You know, revise them. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Karen. I think the more welcome. the more documentation we have over this, uh, the better off we're going to be. In some I ways, I absolutely agree. Um, mm. And so I appreciate your time tonight. And Alfie, I'll get with you once I've got, had the field field people, you know, do the field review, and then um, I'll have a, a better, um, you know, idea on exactly where we need to go. And uh, Michael, I will look for some uh, some past permits and some that I've even created and send them to you, and you can just take your pick. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Great. All right. Thank you all. Have a Thank good night. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Have a good night. Yeah. You too. Thanks. All right. So I'll leave that on in case Chuck shows up. Yep. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're running a bit behind. Alfie, are you up for just doing road report? Sure. So just keep Don't have a lot. carrying on. Uh, carry on, carry on. We have had a little bit of winter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think we've kept up with it so far. Um, good news is Greg is back from his vacation. Mm -hmm. So we are fully staffed. And um, trucks are all working fine. Everything seems to be running along smooth. Mm -hmm. um, uh, an update on, just for your information, the, the, the truck that got rolled over. I am working on hiring a mechanic to swap the motors mm -hmm. from the one, because the, mo the truck that got rolled over was has a really good motor in it. We have a problem with the other truck. They're identical, so it's an easy swap. So the other, when you say the other truck, you mean the one that they went and bought? Uh, bought for that that's, purpose. That's correct. Oh, okay. That's correct. Yep. So, yep. Huh. Uh, there's a motor problem with that, so it just seems mm -hmm. logical to swap mm -hmm. the motor out, and mm -hmm. then we can. That truck is typically used for chloride mm -hmm. and a spare truck in mm -hmm. the winter if this one one fails. So, mm -hmm. uh, working on getting somebody lined up for that. They would come and do it on site, probably I'm in, that they would in your garage. Right site, yeah. Yes, and then we could help out wherever mm -hmm. we could to mm -hmm. try to save save costs. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's in the works. Don't know as far as timing and all that, but uh, just mm -hmm. so you guys know where my head is with that. I just Sounds think very reasonable. The, it just seems like the logical thing to do. Mm -hmm. it does. Yeah, and then we can get rid of the rest of that. <laughs> sort of bad memory. <laughs> um, other than that, I think everything is going along smooth. Um, We're good on chloride and sand at this point. Yeah, salt has been delivered. We've done oh. all that. Uh, salt is is fully stocked. Like I said, trucks are trucks are holding together just fine. Um, um, but as you know, things break down, and mm -hmm. we have to act. Uh, as quick as we can to get them back 
good to me. Sounds good to me too. Any, any complaints that I need to know about? Or I have not heard any. We'll try to get those to you as soon as yeah. possible. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. We try to send those to you quickly. Robert's got a lot more to bring along. I just want to stay on top of it. If yeah. there is an issue, I want to be able to uh, conquer it. Right yeah. Mm. I think I did pass on an email from one of your neighbors a couple weeks ago about a uh, truck idling or something, but which is a oh. com, com You mean one I of the neighbors it? of the town garage? Yeah. Oh. I sent it to the town garage, so. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Well, I'm wondering about that. If okay. If we should change the, the name on that, the email on that, mm -hmm. um, because I'm, I'm not sure that I'm getting those. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Um, it got changed when the town clerk and town treasurer um, changed their email addresses. Okay. Um, but yeah, if you aren't getting them, um, we should mm -hmm. try to figure out why not, why that's happening. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm happy to respond to emails, but right. I and fix whatever problem there is. But I just need mm -hmm. to know it. And if I can't is get it, the email, okay. Is that the same complaint that came in last year? Yeah. Uh, well, it's a neighbor that does frequently complain about the town mm -hmm. garage. Mm -hmm. yeah. That so I think that. We, t we were told at one time that, that the loader is like constantly running all day long. Is that true? Even when nobody's uh, there? When nobody's using it? Incidentally, I am learning of that oh. as, as past pra practices. Uh -huh. That will not continue. Okay. I, I can't see the logic in that. Seems wasteful. I, I am also working on um, ways of getting the loader inside. Right now, oh. it stays mm -hmm. outside mm -hmm. year round, mm -hmm. and it's. I just know it's not good for that hydraulic system to be mm -hmm. out in the cold. Yeah. I mean, it's plugged in, the motor starts, it's fine, but that hydraulic oil is still cold. Um, so I'm going to try to figure out a way to get it inside, uh, even if I have to put the 550 outside. So you have um, three bays. We have four total. Four. Oh, okay. Uh, three are occupied by trucks that go out every day. Three truck? Oh, including the 550? Uh, no, the, the, low 550, pro to the, low pro. the 550 could easily oh, the, oh, okay, outside, the low pro. Okay, yeah, okay. in my opinion, because yeah. you could just cover the salt. Mm -hmm. It's just the, the, the B box in the back, mm -hmm. just cover mm -hmm. that, keep mm -hmm. the water off of it. Yeah. Um, it's just changes that I need to kind of work in slowly without making aggravation and... That's just the process. So uh, the, the, the loader idling will not continue. No good. Um, sometimes when it's super cold, I get that mm -hmm. it has to run, but it doesn't have to run all day, mm -hmm. every day, mm -hmm. especially when it's as warm as it has been. Mm -hmm. So I think I can address mm -hmm. that issue very well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Thank you. I don't know if the public is allowed to make a comment. Of course, I think yeah, that is perfectly I'd just like to thank you all for your work. I've noted how well the roads have been cared for during those spells of icy, like crossing town lines, and I'm like, oh, what Gary was out, but <laughs> this town hasn't been out yet. Today. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So maybe I'll try sending you an email tomorrow morning, or yeah. um, and. You know, you can let me know if you got it or not. Um, I probably, I probably deleted that email that came to me. Um, okay. Otherwise, I'd try forwarding it again. But um, I'm assuming uh, that email is referenced to the loader running. Something That's running, it. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. I don't. Yeah, you know, this was really before winter hit, so. Um, oh. Yeah. No. Okay. I'll look. I might still have it. I'll that look. was the that was the complaint that came in last year was about the loader running yeah. all the time. And this particular neighbor has complained about the backup beepers, beeper. and I did try to explain to them that that's a federal law do? or whatever. Yeah, that's so. a tough one to get around. That, <laughs> that is a safety mm -hmm. feature that yeah. really needs to be needs to be there. Needs to be there. Yeah. 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 Because on that paper we get, was it Ben that set up our emails for us? Ben Witt, yes. Because mm -hmm. I noticed that the garage's email is dot 
O R T on there oh. instead of O R G. Well, that's a typo then. That's what I was taking it at, yeah. but maybe that's the way it was built. Mm -hmm. That'd be a question mm -hmm. for Ben Witt, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, if he's not getting the emails. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Well, honestly, I, I, I look at the email very often. I'm like, mm -hmm. where is everybody? There's nobody communicating with <laughs> me. So only because my previous mm -hmm. appointment was, I mean, I got 10 or 15, sometimes 20 emails a day. Mm -hmm. And I'm getting zero here now. So I'm mm -hmm. just like, why? What, what, what is it? But... Um, well, let's get to the bottom of that. I'm just assuming that there are no complaints, so that's... <laughs> well, so far, so good. <laughs> yeah, I actually kind of like it when I open up my computer and then there's <laughs> another... <laughs> so that's something that we can... Okay, I guess we better we figure that out. happy mm -hmm. to bring the computer or, or okay. whatever it takes to... Yeah. And we had talked about trying the other accessory town computer and having one yeah, for you one for separately. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can try to do that all in one one go. Okay. Just make a date okay. and go to the town office and see if we can't okay. figure it out. So that there's one for the shop and there's one for you. Right. Okay. Okay. And I'll send a test email um, tomorrow morning before you get there. Okay. You can see if it's there. Yeah. And the one that you said was the town's the select board's computer, is that that one? or No, that's my computer. Yeah. yeah. The, but the, the other one that wouldn't work with this? It never it wouldn't work, work, but it would freeze but up. It freezes right up the middle yeah. of oh, whatever. And, and then you were stuck. Where is that? What? It's, in, um, in the, it's in the old select board meeting room. No. Oh, okay. List, the Lister room. The Lister room. Okay. It's in a case. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I don't want to deal with it anymore, so I just... Use my own, I know. So it just give but it, it to might, Alfie. It, it might, well, yeah. <laughs> it's not exactly what I meant. It's frozen with some salt on it, I'll let you know. A big hammer is what I kind of wanted to use. I, 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 I think for, I think for, for, for email and for internet, yeah. it's going to be fine. I think that it's the dry, it was a driver problem. It, it would here. usually freeze up during something like this, and I couldn't just shut the computer off without everything else goes. You know, losing everything. Losing everything. You know, shutting the meeting down mm -hmm. and stuff. So mm -hmm. there was nothing I could do. Yep. It happened to me twice. That was that wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this past weekend, I took the clerk's laptop home, so I could get on there throughout the mm -hmm. long weekend and see if there was any thing that mm -hmm. needed to be forwarded to anybody, mm -hmm. and I didn't have anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's what I plan on doing, at least through the winter time, is taking that home on okay. Thursdays yeah. with me. Okay. That was great. Yeah. Okay. And feel free to call my number, my cell phone number, or my personal email, whichever. I don't, yes. Just, if there's an issue on the road, I need to know about it, want to know about it. Right. Yeah. Got it. And you did get hold of the state police and give them your name for Woodbury? I have not done that. I will add that to my list. Okay. But. Um, because they probably still think that I'm working for Callis, I'm guessing, at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get them up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They know where to find you. <laughs> yeah, that's right, right. Um, so mm -hmm. if nothing else for me. Nothing, not, nothing for me. Very good. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Um, Woodbury Library Board is on to talk about their 24 budget requests and their OSUESD request for a fire alarm system Excellent. in the library in the community. Yeah, well, that's the coming from the, from the school, not the library. Right, now. Okay. So the, we kind of lumped them yeah. together. So yeah, you were just wanted to be on for the uh, budget request, right? Yeah. Is that when you, are you here for that too? No, <laughs> <laughs> What? Oh. <laughs> Leave that other complicated <laughs> stuff. Leave that other stuff behind for now. So you want, you want, go ahead. Okay, so we would like, so I'm Terry Eldred, and this is Stephen Murphy, and we would like to request an additional 4000 to the town appropriation for fiscal year 24. Uh, so an additional, yeah. 4000 Yeah. So our total amount we would like to request for fiscal year 24 is 18000 uh, for fiscal year 23, we have an appropriation amount of 14000 
and we're requesting this amount because our Eleanor Angel fund is about run out, mm -hmm. so we need to balance that out. Um, so it would be primarily used for the payroll of our library director and other daily expenses. Do you, uh, shoot, um, the latest record I have, which would be the end of, of, uh, July 2020, you had a substantial fund balance. But that, I think, was before you... Did I get the right report? I don't know. That was before you paid all that money for the roof. Yeah, that was a big chunk. It was so a huge do you have any, any idea what the, what the fund balance is now? Last time I checked, it was like 2065. You're kidding me. Well, it was like $33,683. Well, the wow. roof... Took like nineteen thousand dollars. Roof took a took a big, yeah. yeah, it was a almost huge, twenty thousand dollars. It's a huge hit. Yeah. It's a huge hit. Mm -hmm. So yeah, in the re last financial report that we got from Brandy, um, the library reserve fund is at five thousand one hundred thirty-seven yeah. and forty-seven cents. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure it's dropped since then. So all the money you saved for not paying the, the library director all those months when we didn't have one or it was closed or something, that all probably went to pay for that roof replacement. Huh? Yeah. And we're, we're budgeting for the payroll looking ahead. Uh, we, there was mm -hmm. a period where we had no director mm -hmm. and we saved on payroll um, through the volunteer efforts of mm -hmm. Sarah mm -hmm. and Laura, mm -hmm. the trustees who filled in the shifts and kept the library running. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, we have a director now, and mm -hmm. we're anticipating a full payroll going ahead. Mm -hmm. But still the same amount of hours? Yeah, about 60 a month. Mm -hmm. And... You've also requested ten thousand dollars from ARPA. Would uh, do you still think you need that, or <laughs> what would that go towards? Well, my understanding of that uh, ARPA request is that, um, of course, with the pandemic, um, there was no um, high breakfast. Right, right. Yeah, thing. I know. But, so it's like lost revenue from the from the yeah, pandemic. But, from, yeah, from fundraising that couldn't occur. But still, they have what they have now, and they're kind of starting from what we have now. And if you had another ten thousand dollars, would that be used for additional programming or just? To I think it would have to be. I think ARPA has to be used for specific programming needs, so we couldn't use it for. I don't think there's any restrictions. There's no restrictions on the ARPA money. Mm -hmm. Yep, they've released all the restrictions. Is it above three million dollars or a million dollars? Well, which we're not there. We don't have it. We don't have it. Yeah. So yeah, I, think I don't think that's a concern. Um, I don't think you have to worry about how you spend mm. any of the ARPA money yeah. that you would receive. But if it builds towards a, a budget that you can use for additional programming or right. to make sure that looking forward with payroll that you have that steady balance, right? So we're not coming and going back to increased expectations from town budget. I mean, it sounds like a reasonable use of ARPA funds for a very specific set of reasons. I'd like, I'd, I'd like for them to have the flexibility to Increase programming as need be. So, um, biased, the, the eighteen thousand dollars would that pretty much cover your annual expense if nothing special comes up? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you know that you're asking us to put this basically in the town report, which would have to be mm -hmm. approved by the voters. Yep. But, right. Mm -hmm. 
You guys in favor of that? Yeah, I don't have a problem with that. I have no problem with it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it still has to, it, it has to go before the town. Yeah, right. But I have no reason not to, mm -hmm. to put it before the town. Okay. Personally. Is that a motion? Uh, motion to uh, increase the Woodbury Library fund budget by $4,000 for FY24 for the town meetings, for a review at the town meeting. Mm -hmm. So this would be an agenda item for the town in the town meeting? Not well, the increase, you know, just well, the total dollars. Yeah. Um, the total. Over the last two or more years, um, because we were doing things with a paper ballot for town mm -hmm. meeting, mm -hmm. I think we eliminated a lot of the separate votes that we used to mm -hmm. have. So mm -hmm. I think we'll probably have to, at one point, have a conversation whether we want to go back mm -hmm. and have those mm -hmm. separate votes. Mm -hmm. But uh, before our, uh, before our, before COVID, uh, we always used to have a separate line item for the library for budget. The library budget. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Okay. So, Everybody clear on the motion? Mm -hmm. Can you say the motion again? Because I'm kind of wondering if that, the way you said it, sort of applies to having it go before the town to vote on it. Sounds yeah. like which it does. Well, it does, it does have to okay. go. Okay, all right, yeah, okay. It does have to go. Yeah. It has to. Okay, it has to. We can't just give it out. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, is there a second for? Yeah, yeah I'll so. second it. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. So. So we'll put the you request in has been is it will show up for town meeting. <laughs> Thank you all. We appreciate it. I know I appreciate it. I like having a library in town, personally. Mm. I know my children like having a library in town. So, like I said, I'm biased. <clears throat> um. And I think the library is probably very happy to have a treasurer now. So that's great. <laughs> I know Brandy's happy with that. Um, I'd like to hear f what the board has to say about this OSU ESD request. Oh, the fire alarm I, thing. I don't know what to do with this. I have a, some questions to ask to start out with, if you'd like. Do we have anybody who is Larry, Larry Elder? Oh, Larry. Yeah. Sorry. Larry. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I apologize. Thank so, you for yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can give Thank you, I can give the select board a little background on this. I think mm -hmm. I forwarded the information. Um, so I was first contacted by Ann about um, an alarm system, at, and for the basically the annex room, but um, I mean, I know it's in, in the proposal that the whole library is included. Um, mm -hmm. So did this come from some, uh, and you mentioned that it was from an audit. I'm wondering who, who was the entity that conducted the audit? I don't, I don't know about any audit. Okay. I can tell you how it all came about. Okay, that's Please. what I would like to say. That sounds yeah. great. Let's do that. When we were in discussion about building the outdoor pavilion down mm -hmm. here, the fire marshal came and had to file for a permit through the fire marshal's office. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he said that he, he demanded that we put fire alarm system into that annex, or into the outdoor pavilion, and mm -hmm. tie it into the system. Mm -hmm. in, uh, in the outdoor school. building? The, the new building? Yes. Yeah. Well, oh, geez. Uh, building over, yet. And in the process of all that, of course, having to get bids to what that was going to cost us to do that. Um, through a couple, three different outfits. Um, and the easiest way to get that tied in was to obviously come up to this building, go across and down into the, mm -hmm. where, the where the electrical panel is here, which comes mm -hmm. out of the electrical panel in there so we could run it through the piping and into mm -hmm. the building. Through that process, though, we discovered that with a lot of the new federal um, state rules and laws, mm -hmm. um, if we change around or up, that system in there, um, it very likely would fall into place that they would say we have to bring that all up to the new federal standards, which mm -hmm. are a bit ridiculous, um, mm -hmm. I will say. 
You have to have all this annunciation so when a fireman walks to the door, he can speak on a speaker that goes through the building. Um, there's a tremendous amount of money that's going to be involved in it. Mm -hmm. But he also, but after meeting with him and going over and asking why does the building that's down by the pond that's not connected to anything need to be tied into a system, he finally changed his mind and said, well, no, you don't need to tie it in. Mm -hmm. But that had already brought up this whole thing of looking mm -hmm. at this building has never been connected to anything. All mm -hmm. it has is that little smoke alarm. Yeah. Um, obviously, he, he at that point, the fire marshal said, I do need to set up an appointment with me to come back and go through the school and all the buildings, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. see what needs to happen. I can guarantee you that he's going to say that this building needs to have fire protection. It's yes. tied in there, which then is going to kick in that whole other scenario. Mm -hmm. So what I did was I had um, a price of doing a standalone stand system here, mm -hmm. which you could do without touching that building, mm -hmm. um, and it would be a lot cheaper. Right. Mm. The other thing to think about is obviously with this close contact, if this building did catch on fire in the middle of the night for some reason, and the wind was blowing that direction, you could lose your school very quickly. Mm -hmm. So I think it's probably a you know time to have this happen, yeah. and that's mm -hmm. where the mm -hmm. cost. I mean, we can obviously get some other bids, but I can almost guarantee you it's going to run you right around the twelve thousand five hundred dollars that. Because I shot pretty heavily mm. at that price. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't be, I mean, You'd have if you know. ever did a, a, a study of how many people use this building how many hours a week, it would probably be pretty darn low. So it's not really about protecting lives, it's about it's property protection. Protecting right. well, lives. Students else. use so it. You're right, it's probably not protecting <laughs> lives as such, mm -hmm. but. Um, there was twelve thousand dollars against the property right. loss yeah. of the whole building. Yeah, that makes so that or makes a little more sense or, to me. Or if you prop, if you look at twelve thousand based against maybe eighty to one hundred thousand dollars to upgrade the whole mm -mm. system over there, mm -mm. Um, it might be time to act, <laughs> be proactive. And, yeah. Um, just do it all. Really maybe we can take that ten thousand dollars that the uh, library wants from ARPA. <laughs> He's nodding. <laughs> um, and it does make sense to, I mean, I'm, now that I know where the, the impetus for this started from, I mean, I, I'm surprised that the town, I mean, the town insures this building. And I'm surprised that the we, insurer has never brought that never up. Brought it up to Because that is what happened at the town garage. Yep. Um, we're still they, working on stuff. They did an audit, um, and this is the LCT passive, and you know, demanded um, that the town have a fire alarm system there, um, mm -hmm. along with a number of other things. So, because um, that's the mm -hmm. main way that um, town highways uh, loss of equipment is through mm -hmm. fire in the mm -hmm. garage. Mm -hmm. but, and it does get really tricky with the school being under. OSSU. The OSU's hmm. control and what we hmm. do there, and this being under hmm. the town, it just makes it's it very, very difficult to figure yeah. out how All to these complications we create in Woodbury. We, yeah, we made it difficult for ourselves in a lot of ways, but we kept <laughs> possession of our school. Just to go on record to tell you, you're still better off if you could just sell that for a dollar to the school district. <laughs> <laughs> it would make life a lot easier for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe we can talk about that the next time. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we, we did try to bring it up. We did time. bring it up a few times. <laughs> um, I mean, this to me makes a perfect sense. Um, we, you know, this should be. We should have a fire alarm system on this building. I can't. can't it's amazing we that we haven't mm -hmm. had. Um, mm -hmm. Did you contact Mountain View um, security? No. Okay. no, because Mountain View no longer exists. I know, they got bought out by somebody else. Seacoast, and yeah. we dealt with Seacoast over there in the district. And I actually did away with them. Okay. It was just so the process of dealing with them to get them to respond, to get them to call okay. back was, so now all three schools that have no zoos are, are taken care of by a more local company. Um, Mm -hmm. Michael Electric actually okay. sees it and does it. Um, the price that, that, however, that Mix, did you say? Mike Electric up in uh, Weathersfield. Weathersfield. Oh, okay. 
but um, actually the guy that does all the fire alarm installation is my next door neighbor. Okay. Columbia, so. And it, it sounds like you did due diligence on trying to find the lowest. Well, I actually here. got a price from them to mm -hmm. connect up stuff, which was. That's why I went out shopping for other So companies. that's not the yeah. price that you came to us with on no, the email? No, it is okay. not. No. No. Um, it sounds like Larry did some, made some a work. number of calls and got a number of quotes. Yeah. Illinois Electric was by far and away the best okay. price, mm -hmm. but I'm not saying that we should go through the whole process again. Uh -huh. I just doubt that you're going to find it any cheaper. Yeah. Okay. I guess it depends on whether or not we do want to go ahead and spend the additional cost to link the buildings together and upgrade the school oh, at the same sounds time. sounds like if we link the buildings together that the school <laughs> has like a hundred thousand dollar right. bill to, to upgrade. Have to get into there. that. And that's what Larry doesn't want to have happen. I mean, and right I, now and what I, would happen is I, I, te I tend to agree, but just want to be clear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. That mm -hmm. the only ac the only reasonable option is to try to find a good standalone system. For the community room in the right. library. Yeah, which is what he's done. I the yeah. standalone system that you get priced out right now is probably as top best of the line, as we're get. best you're going to get. Mm -hmm. yeah, it could be hooked up. So apparently, involved. you already have a some place that you, you call into, like from the town garage. I don't know if you have anything at the town clerk's office or not. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. We have one at the, the fire town station. Town at the town uh, garage, it's monitored 24 7 by, well, whatever company we. We have it. Yeah, we we right. so I mean, what I'm saying though is you could have this picked up by that same company or it mm -hmm. could be picked up by the company that we use, which is mm -hmm. Cops, I believe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so that, that, those options would be you know, mm -hmm. open to whatever you can negotiate or you can want to do, but mm -hmm. it would be monitored 24-7 mm -hmm. with a panel that would call out and do test calls every day to make sure that it's operational and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. So, so, so yeah. if we had a separate system here, the folks that do the monitoring for the school building, do um, you think that they would be willing to take this on too? Oh, definitely. Okay. I mean, we'd pay for it. Yeah. So that's totally <laughs> separate from the installation. That's just that's, a separate yeah. contract. That's a, it's a, yeah. That's a that's, yeah, annual yeah. contract. Yeah, it's a yearly, mm -hmm. yearly fee. Mm -hmm. So the, um, I had one of the auditors recently ask me why we didn't go out to bid for the new truck. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we lots of reasons why that. But this is going to be over the $8,000. Do we need to do that? Or, I mean, it's kind of our policy. It's the it's our purchasing policy. policy. It's our purchasing policy. Yeah. But it is our policy. So if we yeah. decide that the, the due diligence has been done and there's several um, contacts and prices that have been accepted. Mm -hmm. I would, yeah. Um, do we have to worry about that? Uh, I'm not. Yes, I'm not. We do no. technically. We well, have to worry about technically. it. Technically, because hang on a second. There's somebody in the waiting room. Larry, could you provide the quotes that you've already received? So I can. I, they they would have to all be updated. Done this again. Time. Nobody would yeah. stand behind them because yeah. it's been months since we've done. Yeah. Them. But I could easily get. If you want me to go ahead with that process, I can actually get them. If you already have those contacts, that might. And then, and then we're all. We'd be covered. Then we're, then we're covered. Even though it's not a formal bid process. Well, I would it's feel every avail good with It's it. basically yeah. every available contractor yeah. in the region that's able to do the work. Mm -hmm. That seems like a pretty reasonable bid mm -hmm. process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's only a certain number of people that really install. I was yeah. going to say there's, the yeah, there's, there's nothing there's, to do with the monitoring. No, there's a hand, but there's only a handful of installers. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, Benoit Electric, for instance, they installed the whole system for the Capitol building in Montpelier. Mm -hmm. right. and truck coffee roasters, you know, mm. they know what they're doing. So. Yeah. I just want to ask this person to identify themselves. Okay. okay. Susan? So, Susan, could you identify yourself? Oh, no. I don't know how to do that. Well, just say your name. Just say your name. We can hear you. Is, this, is the volume on? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, <laughs> it's Annie Sawyer. Okay. Oh. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I thought it was off. <laughs> well, yeah. Ann Sawyer. We just wanted to know who, who joined the meeting, that's all. Mm -hmm. okay. Ann Sawyer? Yeah. Uh, Stephen's daughter. 
Hmm? It's David's dog. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, David's okay. Susan. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Where were we? So, so, so Larry's agreed that he will send us updated quotes. Okay. And so we'll have those for comparison. Right? Which sounds like yeah, I can a, do that. a reasonable mm -hmm. next step. And mm -hmm. then we'll still have to... Thank you. I mean, obviously, the, where it falls is that I oversee the school, which also is part of, this is part of our use, so mm -hmm. that's where I became involved in it. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, so. We appreciate it. I mean, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's fuzzy line there. I'm yeah. sure is a pain for you. Sorry for that. Another complication that we've created. <laughs> yeah, we just make trouble. It's always an idea. Yeah. In general, I think this is a, a good idea and probably well past due. To so we, we would have to decide whether to put it in our budget, or mm -hmm. is this something that has to be done? I mean, our budget won't start until July. I just just want you to know that. Once I, once we have the fire marshal comes again, mm -hmm. I can just about guarantee you he's going to demand. Mm -hmm. You won't have a choice. You're going to have to. Well, I don't think that. But I mean, like yeah. now, or can we wait till next summer? I mean, there's probably going to be supply chain issues and all that stuff <laughs> once we hire somebody. But if, but, but if yeah, if we hire somebody and we have a contract, then, then the fire marshal's already going to be satisfied. Yeah. I think that that's honest. up to you. I mean, as long as you're in the process, you're probably fine. Um, Okay. Just as long as you know that it's gonna happen. Contract come in, Esther, you know, bids come in or whatever, and if you can, if they can sign a contract and have them hold it till then, that one thing. Mm -hmm. but the prices are so erratic right yeah. now that it makes it difficult. To yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. If he comes again, you can send him to the town instead of having to deal with. It. Yeah, so it sounds like we agree that it has to be done. We just have to let's figure out how we're going to we're gonna pay for it. Let's review the bids the, uh, and find out how we pay for it. Right. And I don't think we should make the library pay for it. No, I don't, personally. No. It's technically, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, our, it's our building. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. I don't think that's fair. And we don't have anything at the town office either, do we? Not that I'm aware of. <laughs> well, <laughs> hypothetically, <laughs> you'd be aware of it. Yeah, I was <laughs> So we're opening. There's a fire extinguisher. <laughs> <laughs> Two, one upstairs, one downstairs. Yeah, I'm sure it was tested all the time. Right. right. That's one of the biggest issues yeah. we have. Yeah. 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 We don't have like a back door. We don't have a lot of things. Well, there are two entries, so that that would make the fire marshal happy. Yep. There's that door there. I think oh, you're talking about the town, town office. office. Oh, the town <laughs> office. Yeah. There's a window you have can a jump out of. Window. <laughs> <laughs> you have to climb up on the toilet and jump out the window. <laughs> or the, there's always a bulkhead. <laughs> Never mind. But all of that is still on one side of the building. True. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Not actually. Yeah. Look <laughs> at one of those side windows by Route 14. They're pretty. They're pretty big. In chintzy. <laughs> <laughs> There's pretty good breeze coming through there. Mm. Okay. All right. So, so we're good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Larry's going to get some updated numbers, and we're going to decide. And we're going to decide how to try to pay for it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I Thank you. Put I appreciate it, it very much. Uh, okay. Um, no, be fast. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, What's up? No, I was just trying to think there was another another thing for the school, but you just said it. So yeah, it is a, it is a school and town thing. Yeah. So yeah. This is uh, the recognition of PFAS and PFOA water contamination in um, Woodbury School. I guess we're not the only school that's dealing with this right now within OSSU, but um, it's the one that is of obviously greater concern to our immediate. Family and district. Um, Larry, I don't know how much you have that you want to talk about with this, but well, I have in the early stages. Right? Yeah, okay. yeah. So, the, so I have a question for Larry. Is this a program that the state is doing in, with all of the water systems for all the schools? That's what I thought. Every okay. school in the state has to be tested. Right. Um, and unfortunately, our levels were just below the limit. and 
creeped up and then creeped down and mm -hmm. then came suddenly came back and just went over the limit. Mm -hmm. um, the last two tests. Yeah. And do you have an understanding from anybody from the state about why this is happening? Um, <laughs> well, obviously it's a man-made issue mm -hmm. that we've created, either from something which is strange because of where the location is, mm -hmm. um, but it could get into the groundwater and seep from um, quite a distance, so whether or not it comes down gradient from above, um, nobody knows. It. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. However, I can tell you that Joe and I have a meeting this Thursday with two representatives from the uh, groundwater uh, uh, yeah, protection division here mm -hmm. in Vermont. And, uh, so at that point, we'll probably find out quite a lot more. One of the people that's coming is just a preliminary discussion with us. Mm -hmm. Preliminary, they sent us an 82-page thing form that we have to fill out. Mm -hmm. um, so he's going to come and meet and just have some talk. And he's going to probably be the one from the state that does their investigation of what's happening and see if they can discover mm -hmm. what's going on. So at mm -hmm. some point in the near future, there will be much more information forthcoming. And what's his name? I can't tell. Oh, right okay. Now. So they're probably yeah, they're they're gonna, gonna, I'm sorry. They're going to try to help figure yes, out. Yes, definitely. Well, that's, nice. yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. Once again, it, <laughs> it's a little difficult. Joe's the water systems operator now because I stopped mm -hmm. doing that. Um, but we're doing it through the school, but as you know, it's a town owned mm -hmm. the water store. So, mm -hmm. um, so you'll all be involved. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. We'll get the preliminary information, keep you up to speed as best we can with what's going on. Any the other schools under your jurisdiction? Now? Luckily, not under my jurisdiction, but we have one other in the district, Crashbury. Crashbury. Oh, um, oh, they've had a yeah. Their, their town. Their, their whole the town, town system. Yeah. 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 And the weird thing is, is that they can't use the water at the school, but now they can. Right. There's a different threshold for residential versus uh -huh. municipal mm -hmm. versus yeah. 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 schools. If this was a residential, we would still be able to use it. Huh. That's what Joshua Corn sent me. Okay. Mm. Um, do this you know if the state is planning to try to, you know, it sounds like they'll definitely be opening up cans of worms across oh, the state. Mm. Is there any kind of funding to help schools? I don't to, believe that they have openly said what was going to be available yet, mm -hmm. but I do know that there has been some discussions um, about, you know, what's going to be available and when and how mm -hmm. to I'm sure there is going to be, um, and how that's going to work out, whether it's landing more towards schools or, mm -hmm. you know, if it's anybody in general, because it's all the schools that are being tested to this program. So. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's a, we're in a waiting pattern. Kind of. Okay. The nice thing that we have going for us here is we don't prepare food here. It mm -hmm. comes out from Harvick. So the only thing that is drinking water um, mm -hmm. can be used for everything else. So the and sinks, the hand washing, is that still yeah, okay? Everything is fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, we just need to provide the drinking water, mm -hmm. which we've been doing with bottled water, but we've just did a contract with... Um, I think it's actually um, the same company that Staples, I think it is, but it's one of those companies anyways mm -hmm. that are going to be providing bubblers and, and the, mm -hmm. the water. So we'll have oh. one out, we'll have one in the center between all the classrooms, one in the gym, and then for some reason or other, I have to admit, we sort of forgot about this. Um, so we'll either continue, we'll either bring another one out to here or we, mm -hmm. will, we will stack furniture some bottle of water for mm -hmm. the usage out here. Mm -hmm. okay. Great. Hmm. Obviously, there's also a little bit of a concern because of the amount of use, like with all the pickleball that goes on and everything, whether, you know, we may put up a sign asking them to please provide their own, you know, bring their own drinking water or mm -hmm. whatever, because you can use up a bottle of water pretty quickly. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know they're aware of the not, not drinking the water. Not drinking the water. <laughs> no, obviously, so, they've signed. Yeah. Yeah. Probably already. Yeah, they can bring their own. Yeah. Yeah. We're doing everything the state requires. We've got all the notices are out that's supposed to be out. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. mm. okay. Can I add two things? Um, one, I just talked to Lisa McCarthy, the principal 
here. And she also mentioned that she's actively has um, grants and other resources on her radar and mm -hmm. is looking out for that kind of support. So mm -hmm. um, she's you know right in it with everybody else in terms mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. the concern and mm -hmm. understanding that the cost. Um, you know, hopefully mm -hmm. we can find some way of mitigating some of the costs. Yeah. Um, I also noticed and wanted to just give a shout out to Myrna, who's been bringing big mason jars of water from her home mm -hmm. for the library when our mm -hmm. kids come. You know, Myrna's always mm -hmm. providing water for, for <laughs> library patrons. So um, she's. For, and so, so library patrons who wanted water would come get it from here? From yeah, the I mean, I think generally, if you're, bottle. I mean, in my experience using the library, it's like, oh, fill up your water bottle, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and so yeah. she's been really great about having potable <laughs> water for library patrons. So yeah. thank you to the library board yeah. for being on top of that, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's a. I think it's going to be, once we reach a certain point on this, it's going to be a going to be involved in with how the funding is going to happen you know mm -hmm. and if they can even find out where it's coming from um, there may not be any way of cleaning it up mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. there is there is technology now so that you can run it through a certain filters and situation and whatnot mm -hmm. to make it work whether how expensive mm -hmm. that would be compared to drilling a well and mm -hmm. putting mm -hmm. all the old bells and whistles in mm -hmm. I have no idea at this point mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no one does so we just, that's why I say yes. I think we just need to see how this plays out for mm -hmm. the state. And mm -hmm. okay. I do believe that you're going to find there will be um, substantial funding forthcoming, but mm -hmm. with the state, you never know. It depends that's, on, a lot yeah, on how, many, how many of these issues come up and how mm -hmm. they got to spread that money out, I think. Mm -hmm. but, uh, and we have been, we're already becoming, beginning the process of being involved with um, an engineering firm to help us figure this out as well mm -hmm. we need to do something oh. down that road. So. Mm. You found one that has a water specialist? Oh, or? I dealt with them all. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 We've run a number of water systems and oh. dealt yeah, with okay. one in Wilkit with the elementary school there that mm -hmm. I oversaw for 20 years or so. And mm -hmm. we, build, we had houses on that system as well. Mm -hmm. We separate that off with mm -hmm. this state one firm that I worked with building new wells and new tanks. So you've given up all those? Yep. All that extra work, yeah? Seventy yeah. years old now. <laughs> That's not gonna keep doing it forever. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. It's hard to work when you're more than seventy. Thank you so much, Larry. Yeah. yeah thank you. Very helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Anytime you need information or you want yeah, questions. Yeah, so it looks like we don't have okay. anything we need to be doing now we except will, to be aware. We will keep you informed yeah. whenever we Okay. Great. Thank okay. you. Mary. Thank you. Take care. So, do you want to talk a little bit about your own concerns that you shared the other night at the planning no, commission I, meeting? I, I think that Larry has everything on okay. hand. Okay. Um, I've been in touch with Joe, who Larry just mentioned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have all the data. I sent it to you all. I mm -hmm. sent it to the planning mm -hmm. commission. So all the data that is publishable, we have okay. for mm -hmm. Woodbury. The the links that came through that email that I forwarded to you all, and maybe we can put that on the town website as well. Can't okay. okay. People want to actually. Did, have did access you just to do it. that recently, or no? It's the email I sent to you guys uh, earlier this week. Okay, I'll have to look for it. But I can mm -hmm. send it again, and well, then maybe I'll send it, and we can post it. Yep. Which would be great. Then people can have some data to go along with the warnings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I've I spoke to the head of um, VD, VTDEC DWG WDP. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, those guys. Yeah. Mm. Okay. <laughs> you forgot the A and R part. Yeah, no, it's not A and R. It's oh, you're yeah, kidding no, me. No, I know. There's no A and R in there. Oh, geez. Uh, yeah. Um, and uh, short for what? <laughs> I don't even remember. Um, you know, DEC, it's a division of DEC. Okay. Uh, and uh, he and I talked about exactly what Larry was dealing with, which is that they're really at the start of trying to figure out what sort of source issues mm -hmm. are going on with mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. um, and 
gave me some information, which I haven't forwarded yet, about what the standards are that they're using for municipalities versus school systems versus private wells. Mm -hmm. My question to him was, um, can we find money to have, because if you do a standard drinking water test and you pay 15 bucks or whatever, it doesn't cover any of these, con these constituents. Mm -hmm. um, can we find some money to actually help with that? Mm -hmm. The answer was no. Mm -hmm. But from the state, from the state. Yeah. but it doesn't mean that we can't do something about it on our own. Um, but Sorry, people need to be made aware of it before they even know what to test for. Mm -hmm. So yes, you mean yes. providing um, resources for private citizens to be able to test their, their own, own water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. The only reason that we know that there's an issue is because of the testing here. Right. Because they test for it and you don't. We don't, and we just our household mm -hmm. just did. Um, standard water testing like yeah. we have our well tested every, every year five you yeah. know whatever we, we it do is. Ours. we do like the standard test right. mm -hmm. and then we do the expanded like basically everything that's offered including radon like every five years or whatever yeah. and this test wasn't even available no yeah. to as a residential mm -hmm. yeah so that's what my concern yeah. that okay. i addressed with them was it would be really it's interesting it's to know about the you know our outdoor water sources that get a lot of use mm -hmm. To have those tested at um, some point. Anyway, so I'm learning more. Uh, we'll keep okay. keep the select board as aware of that as possible. Okay. And I talked to the state geologist who was quite helpful. Mm -hmm. um, and this was about having someone from DEC come and give an explanation of PFOA and PFAS contaminants to the town yeah. broadly. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, yeah. So that um, we just are aware of mm -hmm. you know what the different types of contaminants are how they're potentially generated why we could do this and be far away from um, an industrial location where most of the places we've recognized this in the state of vermont are associated with industrial facilities or past industrial locations mm -hmm. but it is an airborne contaminant and it's in just about everything this is the short answer mm -hmm. from floor wax to mm -hmm. the coating on your jacket mm -hmm. So um, yeah. it would be good if, the, if, if we could be made aware. And Chris came before the <coughs> Planning Commission last week to, with this concern, and um, the Planning Commission um, has agreed to um, host uh, knowledgeable people to come and just do an informative meeting um, for people um, in the town. And that, that'll probably happen sometime soon. we we'll, are we'll kind of waiting for Chris to contact some people and see yep. if they would be willing to come but Great. so i am trying to put it together as fast yeah. as possible yeah. so thank you and we're thinking we would probably use the school gym to have this informative meeting because uh, um, i would assume that some people would be concerned about this but probably more than this room could hold mm -hmm. and the town halls too cold <laughs> <laughs> for a while anyway mm -hmm. so I have yep. a question. Would the select board like me to reach out to the Crossberry School Rep to find out any information about how they're handling it in their community? And, or would that be of help to you? Or just kind of, it sounds like you're really on it. And you certainly would. have a lot of the information you need, mm -hmm. but I'm happy to. I certainly they've been, But they've been working on this for more, probably more than six months, maybe less than a year. Crossberry? Yeah, right? It's, I have a friend who's on the select board there, and, and they have a. Uh, I don't know their timeline. Yeah, but anyways, it's been ongoing, so it would be nice yeah. to know what they're, sure. what they've decided, you, what That'd they found great. out in the yeah. meantime. Yeah. yeah. Would you like me to connect sure. you directly? Um, that would be wonderful. To the chair of their board. Sure. I'd be thrilled. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I appreciate Thank that you. very much. And I certainly trust Larry and Joe to. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. Definitely. For what they're doing. Here. For what they're working mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. okay. They're on it, for sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so, next on the agenda, wow, look at that, back on really? schedule. Right on, right on the money. Um, wow. Review status yeah. of ARPA fund applications and potential approvals. Well, I have uh, summarized what we've done so far. Mm -hmm. For you, Uncle Michael. Thank you. Anybody else want one? Here, you should have a good one to Robin. Here, give one to Ann. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. 
in the far right hand corner our far right hand column is a total of what we've actually approved so far $67,794 and then the rest of the stuff is still pending the both I think we wanted to work on the town and office and town hall weatherization projects but we don't have wicked firm numbers for those no quite yet mm -hmm. those are still a little bit wishy-washy mm -hmm. I'm afraid mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. as much as I'd love to commit to both of those things because mm -hmm. we've been talking about it forever so we had one uh, former road commissioner who was going to come in tonight or rather zoom in tonight yeah I don't see him waiting and talk about uh, whether or not some of this money could be used for towards a greater right so hopefully he'll or somebody will come up with some money as I mean some numbers as far as how much that would cost we should have Drive um, Alfie into this while I was here. Maybe we can talk to him. He has a pretty good sense for this. Yeah. The because uh, the last quotes that we have are pretty antiquated at this point. Mm. The money has to be obligated by the end of 2024, but it doesn't have to be spent until the end of 2026. Mm -hmm. So there is time to put that money away and and build a fund to pay for the rest of it if we decide to put some of that there I mean the ARPA committee did you know they sort of made a second deadline which is May of next year for people who had ideas that they didn't have at the time that this first round of applications was accepted but you know Are there any that um, that it would be prudent to um, to discuss and um, approve or disapprove at this point? That well, insulation in the town office was a pretty formal quote. Granted, yeah, it it's, was. Yeah. yeah, it it's it's old now, and mm -hmm. I'm sure that we that have price, to find another person. We can't use the same person. <laughs> so yeah. I mean, I mean, I think that that should be high on the list. I, I think that that was. Um, was prioritized mm -hmm. by the committee, mm -hmm. yeah, my recollection at least. Okay. Yeah. And I did notice in their survey um, that um, roads actually came out first mm -hmm. and broadband came out second. second. And, uh, yeah, there's plenty of other money available for roads. That was That's what I've always... That's for equipment? Not for equipment, no. 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 I mean, the the survey questions about roads were kind of, you know, sketchy, but I think roads or road equipment is one way to spread the benefit over mm -hmm. a large mm -hmm. number of taxpayers. Yeah, pretty much everybody. Yeah. So, yeah, our, our little town hall committee is kind of at a and still it would be nice to find somebody who would like to be a clerk of the works and kind of take all these different ideas and uh, put them together and start she's getting looking, some plans. She's looking directly at you. What? Who's that? No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Diana. <Yeah. laughs> I was thinking of somebody with some constructor. I don't know if you're a contractor, but somebody with some got that kind of experience. I mean, you know, like a Larry Eldred, which there aren't enough of. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because, yeah, yeah, I'm not doing it. And <laughs> Do you think Mary Jo would be interested in doing it? I don't know. No? Okay. No, I know she wouldn't. What about Lizzie? Oh, was he Higgins? Higgins. Mm -hmm. I don't know how busy she is with I her. I don't either. I'm sure she's terribly busy. Job. But mm -hmm. yeah, she, would she would have the knowledge separate, to help us with this. Well, mm -hmm. <clears throat> we do have a nice study. We have two. Yeah, we do, we do have a study by the uh, Jan Lewandowski, who's a historical buildings expert. We don't really have much from our energy auditor, but we can always get another energy auditor in there. Although, I always thought that 
it's not going to be a project that saves energy. It's going to be a project that helps us use more energy, but use it more efficiently. Mm -hmm. so. well, at least we could use it in the wintertime. Yeah, have. that's what I mean. It's going to be using, Finally. it's more about Again. making the building usable than about energy conservation. Yeah. I mean, we do have an audit from the contractor through Efficiency Vermont. That, oh, we do? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, which another contractor could work from. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And Efficiency Vermont is fine with that. Mm -hmm. so. Did you get my email about the window project in Crash? Yeah, Bay? and actually when, when um, the first step with the, all of the town buildings um, with this energy stuff was uh, an assessment, an energy assessment from Efficiency Vermont. Mm -hmm. And the woman who came and did that um, suggested that um, that we contact this. There's a group that that's, will actually come and help and do yeah. these window. That's why I things. sent that email on to you because yeah. you've said that before. Yeah. And uh, this uh, Kevin Gregoire, I think his name is from uh, from Craftsbury. Mm -hmm. I I can't figure out whether he works for somebody or if he just does this on his own. But he said he would be mm -hmm. interested in helping us. Uh, get started on something. Okay. And the, but I and don't know who's going to program that the I'm trying to remember um, her first name was Jennifer. I can't remember her last name, but she said there's also a program where um, somebody comes and does um, like a, a training so there'd be different people from the town. That's, that's the person the that thing. okay. Yeah. That's yeah. the person and then from Craftsbury. Town mm -hmm. folks would build the build the windows. Mm -hmm. um, so um, Yeah. Yeah, I mean that would, that would be one way to to tighten up. Well, I asked him whether um, those those kinds of homemade kind of windows, interior storms would be something that could be done in like a four by four foot <coughs> format. I, I was guessing at the size of those the windows pack, at the, the town, town hall, hall yeah. because they're, they're, they're size, larger pretty, than usual. Yeah, pretty good size. Too. Yeah, maybe more like yeah. three by forty by. Six. 60, I was thinking about something. half of, I mean, one, one half. England section. Yeah. Anyways, so somebody will. It wouldn't be that hard to do. We had a town energy coordinator. They could have that for their first project. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, anyways, so that's, okay. anyways, it was a positive response. You said what they usually do is they work in the spring to take measurements and then they plan for some time in the fall to actually get together and make the windows and the number of volunteers that they had working on this in Craftsbury was amazing they they have a big building i guess down at the um uh the ski center there at Craftsbury outdoor center that they let them use mm -hmm. and they yeah, I'm, I'm sure the space in the town hall um, would probably yeah. be large enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, okay, so well, that's keep following up. Yeah, yeah I don't see any of these line. other other uh, projects as being um, imminent. What about the lost? I mean, the library is asking for lost fundraising mm -hmm. revenue, um, mm -hmm. and. Uh, the friends of the Woodbury Elementary School are, um, have a much smaller amount that they're asking for similar. Um, and I'm sure they could use that lost revenue at any point in time. Yeah, um, I think they should have asked for a little more. Yeah. I think so, we should give them a $1,000. Yeah. So uh, those are things that we could, you know, mm -hmm. um, we could approve. So with Sarah, I think, came to the meeting and talked about what the library could use the money for. She talked about e-books and I forget what else. The programs is It sounds like they would have to should have a plan. What do you know about that, Steve? I don't recall. I don't recall. Okay. I know we were we were um, we canceled due to COVID, excuse me, the pie breakfast three years mm -hmm. running. We did hold this summer during Old Town Day um, silent auction, mm -hmm. which, was, mm -hmm. which we had some success. Um, mm -hmm. 
Well, this is what the app the application says. Due to COVID-19, the library has not been able to hold their annual pie breakfast and silent auction for three years. We plan to hold a silent auction portion uh, summer 2022. Woodbury Community Library will use the funds to reopen expanded hours, which I was just told is not going to happen, and cover salary increases for the next few years. In addition, we have plans to reinstate monthly programs for adults, teens, and children. These funds will also help cover costs for the ebook program. Is that something that's very popular? Ebooks? I don't know about. I don't know about that. <laughs> okay. Well, for yeah, younger folks, like a, e-books are much more commonly used. And, mm -hmm. and the what? Good old, I mean, if you're younger, oh, e-books are a pretty <laughs> yeah. big deal. Mm -hmm. um, really? We and use if you're, them yeah. almost daily. Yeah. <laughs> in our household. Huh. Just for our yeah. kids, like audio books that the kids can listen to that we can check out from the library. Oh. It's a very yeah. nice service. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, and expanding then, that collection, I imagine, might be something mm -hmm. the library is talking about. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't think they were anywhere on this. It's nice to drop into it and think about it, but well, um, mm -hmm. so maybe we could make a plan on how to to get somewhere on some of these things. Should we? Uh, uh, well, the digitizing land records. Brandy said at the meeting that this is not the money. This is not the amount. She said they were. This is only half the amount, mm -hmm. and they can't do the half the twenty years. They won't do that, the contractor, so it's actually $50,000. Uh-huh. So the town would have to come up with a 25K the, match. Like a 50-50 match kind of thing. Right. Or they would ask for $50,000 from ARPA. Okay. <clears throat> but, All right. But I'd like to, I'd well, like to wait and see what we could do that might help the whole town. Uh-huh. Hmm. Well. I think that there are a couple of things that we can we can try to do. The first is highway was prioritized clearly by people who actually voted on some the of survey. these. Yeah. On the yeah, survey. I, have, I have the survey results yeah. mm -hmm. here. Um, mm -hmm. Highway was was high on that list, and there's no highway in here whatsoever. And if 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 we think that a grader is something that needs to we need to start spending towards. Well, then mm -hmm. this is the time to do it, but we need to hear it from someone who's who knows better than we do. Yeah. So I think that that's a first step to talk yeah. to mm -hmm. talk to Chuck. And he was going to. And Chuck was going to do something about it. Something yeah, I don't know it. why he's not here tonight, but. Which is okay. Yeah. We'll figure it out. But we go talk to him and ask him to you know get some numbers together right. so we can so at least we can start. actually. Mm -hmm. Well, Elvi can work on that too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Find you know get an estimate of how much longer this twenty-year-old grader is going to last and how much it would cost to well, that would replace it. Who it's you gonna, ask about gonna, that? <laughs> what kind of grader we're looking for? So yeah. So I think that that's a priority that we have to deal with. Mm -hmm. um, if we really do want to digitize land records, I think that. We need to talk to Brandy and get an actual price. This twenty-five thousand dollars is too wishy-washy. Well, it's actually Robin's job. Well. Brandy put together the application, so mm -hmm. her name's on it. Um, but Robin's the one that's in charge of land records. So what's your opinion? Yeah, on what is your opinion on land mm -hmm. records? I think it's the modern thing to do mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because we still have researchers that are coming from Brattleboro. Mm -hmm. Middlebury, where they mm -hmm. can pull it up online and we'll still get the income from it. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that's not going to save anybody any money. It's not like the lawyers are going to charge less to their clients for doing a title search. I, <laughs> I probably shouldn't say that, but I don't, I don't believe that they're, it's going to save anybody in Woodbury any money. I wonder if there are any funding sources for small municipalities to do that. I can't even think of one. Yeah. I don't even know where to start like for something like that. A lot of like towns that. are using ARPA money for 
for this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the 25K really isn't the right number. It's 50,000. So 50, 50, is, well, that, is that the short answer? Is that we're mm -hmm. looking at It's closer less. to the 50 than the 25, yes. I do know I can make a couple calls to ask people if there is funding. Um, or yeah, I can check with some of the town clerks. I'm going digitizing to put, uh, land records. Town mm -hmm. clerks meeting mm -hmm. Wednesday night mm -hmm. in Wolka. Mm -hmm. Okay. They're gonna have the um, head what's his name? Cemetery person hmm. at this meeting. Oh, oh cool. Their cemetery person or a the, state? The state, the state one. So. Oh. What's his name? Healy. Oh, the one from Montpelier. Yes. Yeah. Patrick Healy. Yeah. Mm. Neat. Okay. So are some of the, any of the... No, this is for clerks and officials. Oh, okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. No <laughs> cemetery people. Okay. No. 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 You can come home and tell them about it. Yeah, and I can check with some of them to see <laughs> if they know if there's, if there's any grants out there other than ARPA. Mm. Okay. For land records. Mm -hmm. I, I, somebody at the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission might know something. So I, I, can, I can call them if you'd like. Okay. I've got a meeting tomorrow with those folks. Mm -hmm. so okay, with attack. Attack. I can ask around a bit. Mm -hmm. Most towns seem to have paid for it themselves. or some. I mean, the larger towns have been doing this for years yeah i'm sure they have an annual good. allocation and after they do the first right. round but you got a little catching up to do yeah. yeah plus there would be an, an in addition to the first bringing up to speed there's going to be annual costs mm -hmm. additional all true well okay okay all right um so we need more data for town hall weatherization and maintenance. That number is unclear. Mm -hmm. Town office insulation issues, we've already talked about those. And I'm remembering for the town office that I was going to contract, I did contact Efficiency Vermont. And it's okay for us to contact other contractors. Um, and I said that I would do that and haven't done it yet. So I just made a note. In red pen. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's probably not going to happen this winter, anyways. At this point, no. But probably we could not. get something lined up for next yeah. next year, and we could make the storm windows because mm -hmm. that was one mm -hmm. of the things that the person who did the assessment um, said is that you know if you're going to you know to have a heat pump or whatever, and to do the the insulation. Um, it doesn't make sense to do all that and not have the windows have some kind of storage mm -hmm. system mm -hmm. on it. And she suggested us just making our own, um, which would make a big difference. So. Because those big windows that look out onto Route 14, that's where I have the typewriter now, and mm -hmm. there is such a draft mm -hmm. that comes through there. Yeah. My hands are frozen by the time I'm done. Mm -hmm. So it's not, I'm sure there's more than a draft. It's, Radiation for being that close to the, you know, the drafts no, you, can can be uh, addressed with weather stripping, but uh, yeah, just the glass. But just being so close to the glass, that's your body heat. I'm sure there's a breeze too, though. But it's cold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and those windows probably came with weather stripping, but they're probably 30 years old, so maybe they just need to be replaced. But usually energy auditors don't suggest that. No. Because windows are not big energy savers because you're still going to have a big piece of glass mm -hmm. there. It's you gonna, have a window. You might have a yeah. R R3 instead of an R1, yeah. but it's still not going to be a big, a big uh, saver. Mm -hmm. oh. I always wanted to get some nice, pulled some nice shades, you know, some nice heavy... That would be nice. Roll shades instead yeah. of those, yeah, those funky slats that we have. That don't. <laughs> that don't work that well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. okay. Um, any other business to mention or further updates that people need to bring up? Okay, so I will take a motion to adjourn Woodbury Select Board meeting for November 28th at 7.58 p.m. Should we do it?
I'll so make moved. that motion. Okay, second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is adjourned.